recognizing the Enlisted Service Member of the Year, Civilian of the Year, and Action Officer of the Year. These programs were established to foster the highest standards of professional conduct, personal integrity, and individual initiative, and highlight the sustained, outstanding achievement of all enlisted service members, civilians, and action officers assigned throughout the Joint Staff. We would like to extend a special welcome to those in attendance today and welcome everyone watching this ceremony remotely. Our host for today's ceremony is General Mark A. Milley, 20th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of the National Anthem, which will be performed by Sergeant First Class Nicole Buffard, United States Army. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glow, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof of the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave, or the The Joint Staff Annual Awards recognize those who have contributed most significantly to the accomplishment of the mission of the United States Armed Forces, as well as support to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in his role as the Principal Military Advisor to the President, the National Security Council, and the Secretary of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, General Milley. So thank you, and for the next hour and a half, I will give you brief remarks. Sorry. So hey, uh, look, at, I know everyone's busy, uh, but I think it's important, and, and last year we couldn't necessarily do this uh, because of COVID and so on. Uh, so it's uh, uh, a great honor for me to stand here and recognize some of the great work by uh, folks on the Joint Staff. I do want to thank a few people that are in the audience first, uh, just for being here. Uh, first is my wife, Holly Ann, down here. I want to thank her uh, for representing all of our spouses and all of our families. Uh, and Holly Ann and I are new grandparents as of about 10 days ago. Uh, so Holly Ann, congratulations on being a grandmother. <laughs> Brand new twins. They come in great packages. So uh, I also want to thank the SEAC. Uh, we are blessed uh, to have uh, CZ. Uh, as our senior enlisted advisor, uh, and I know a lot of folks are listening online, uh, and hopefully this is streaming out to many, many others. Uh, we're, in, we're a military of 2.1 million. Uh, depending on the day, it can go up to 2.2 and down to 2.0, uh, but roughly speaking, 2.1 million Americans are wearing the cloth of our nation, and well over 90 percent of them are enlisted. Uh, and CZ, uh, as the SEAC, is the senior enlisted uh, soldier, sailor, airman, marine, space guardian of the entire United States military. Uh, and he is just a remarkable individual. I know you all know that. Uh, he is uh, just a great leader, great war fighter. Uh, and CZ, I just want to thank you for all your leadership and what you've done. And I do want to thank, uh, he's not here right now, uh, General Pappas, who just left. Uh, and uh, he takes command, I think it's tomorrow, is that right? So, uh, so over the last year, actually two years, uh, General Pappas uh, was the director of the Joint Staff, as you all well know. Uh, great leader, did a wonderful job 
uh, is about to pin on four stars and take command of the United States Army uh, Forces Command. And although he's not here, uh, his younger brother is. Uh, Jim Mingus is now uh, the new director of the Joint Staff. Could you just stand up so everyone can see you? Hard to miss you with that haircut, but you can stand all the way up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So Jim Mingus is there uh, as the director of the Joint Staff. He has been a, a tremendous asset to all of us as the J3 over the last couple of years, and, and we bumped him up to be the director, and uh, we look forward to that. You're going to do a great job, and thank you so much for taking that on. And his replacement is sitting next to him. He is the second best DDRO in Joint Staff history, uh, General, Lieutenant General D.A. Sims, who's now the J3. Uh, and he, is, uh, he has uh, come here out of Division Command, did a great job, uh, has got a tremendous career as a warfighter in the Army. Uh, and I know that uh, you are so proud to be back in the House of Pain. So thank you for being here, D.A. You know, the, uh, I don't need to tell any of you or those that are listening uh, how special uh, the Joint Staff is. And, and the first thing uh, that we should all remember is the title is the Joint Staff. It's not a Joint Staff. Uh, and the Joint Staff uh, is the single most powerful military staff in the military, uh, the most important one. Uh, and that's not to say any others are less important, I suppose, but the Joint Staff is special. Uh, and to be assigned to the Joint Staff, uh, the services pick only the best. Uh, and that is because of the Goldwater-Nichols Act, uh, going back to 1989. Uh, and each and every person that serves on the Joint Staff, whether military or civilian, is literally handpicked, uh, creme de la creme, out of each of the services. Uh, nominations have to be uh, put in and, and then accepted. There's a strict vetting process that goes involved. Many of you may not realize that uh, it was done for you to be assigned to the Joint Staff, uh, but it's true. Uh, and uh, it's a very, very special organization. Uh, it is remarkable, uh, the people that we have on the Joint Staff. I look back at my time here as a colonel uh, downstairs in the J-33, and I think of all the general officers and, and admirals that came out of that organization downstairs in the basement. Uh, in JOD and DDRO. Uh, it's remarkable. And that is just representative of the entire staff. The talent that we have on the Joint Staff is, is incredible. And if you think about uh, what we do and what you do, uh, it's incredibly important to our nation. Almost everything we do, you see uh, on the news in terms of the headlines as to all the activities around the world, whether it's in Europe with the current situation in Ukraine, uh, whether it's in the Pacific with China or North Korea, uh, whether it's in Africa, Middle East, South America, doesn't matter, NORTHCOM, uh, you are involved literally in some of the most important uh, things going on uh, in the world and the security of our nation. And, and today, what we're going to do is give out some awards uh, on an annual basis to those that are extraordinarily well-deserving. And I want to particularly highlight our first awardee, which is uh, uh, a staff sergeant in the United States Air Force, Tech Sergeant Jeremiah DeFratis. Uh, and he's here with his spouse, Chelsea. Uh, where are you at, Chelsea? There you are, Chelsea. Um, and his mom, Julie, made the trip. Uh, and a few other folks from uh, Spokane. I say Spokane. I guess the proper way to say it is Spokane or something. Like that. Spok that's the French way. But I say Spokane, uh, Washington. Uh, he is a SEER specialist, uh, and he works in J7 uh, as part of our team uh, on the Joint Staff. But much more importantly, uh, he's married to Chelsea. Uh, they've been married for less than a year. Uh, they met uh, in church, no less, uh, at a global leadership uh, co conference uh, a little bit more than a year ago. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, uh, Jeremiah thought he would impress Chelsea um, with his athletic skills. As a Sierra specialist, he's highly athletic, and thought that she, uh, she would be duly impressed with his athletic skills. So uh, he took her snowboarding and uh, on, a, on a double, I think it's double diamond is what I wrote down, black diamond, black double diamond slope. Uh, she is an expert snowboarder. Uh, he was on the ground uh, within about 50 meters. Uh, he t got up, tumbled again for another 50 meters, and the entire slope was almost 800 meters long, and he literally tumbled down the rest of it while she made it to the bottom. Uh, so in her words, 
uh, he has uh, grossly overestimated his athletic performance. So, and then on another one, he was hiking, and I won't even go over that one, but uh, she sprinted up this big mountain in Montana, and, and he was uh, hemming and hawing about how hard it was to go up the slope. Sierra Specialist, United States Air Force. And then, <laughs> and then they went kayaking uh, with uh, Chelsea's mom um, and, uh, and some other women, and, and, and the club w was called the Spokane, uh, what is it called, the Spokane, Chelsea, I'm sorry, what is it? Yeah, River Rats, that was it. The, the, the Spokane River Rats. Now, one of the things you should know as a seer specialist, as an escape and evasion specialist, as a, as a survival specialist, is don't go kayaking with 50 and 60 year old women who belong to a group called the Spokane River Rats. Uh, not a good idea. Uh, as he flipped his kayak, uh, very, very quickly, came near to drown. Chelsea had to rescue him. Then her mother comes zipping over in her kayak. She's rescuing him. So you did the Air Force very proud. And so uh, we know that you're an extraordinary serious special. So thank you so much. You're going to hear about his actual duties and why he won this award. He certainly didn't win it for kayaking, hiking, or, or, or snowboarding, that's for sure. I want to take a moment to uh, also highlight another great group of Americans, uh, our civilian workforce and our civilian workforce of the year. And as you know, the civilian workforce here on the Joint Staff uh, provides continuity. Uh, most of us were in a uniform, come in and out at uh, two to three year intervals, but our civilian workforce stays for years and years. And it's critical to maintain that level of continuity uh, on the Joint Staff. It's also not just continuity, uh, but it's incredible competence and skill that we have with our civilian workforce. And they develop a, a very, very deep understanding where a military officer or NCO gets broad understanding, very wide from repetitive assignment or from frequent assignments and different skills. Uh, the civilian workforce tends to uh, develop very, very deep skills uh, in their areas of expertise. So it's continuity and competence uh, that we rely on with our civilian workforce. And, and I want to uh, say that it's a great honor uh, this year uh, to recognize all of our civilian workforce uh, with uh, Robert Casillas. Uh, he represents uh, all of the civilians that work on the Joint Staff, and he's done a great job. He's, uh, again, he's here with his uh, wife, Angela, uh, and he's from Tucson, Arizona. Uh, he enlisted in the Marine Corps uh, back in the day, uh, and then he was selected for ROTC uh, at the University of Arizona. Uh, and then after that, uh, he was commissioned and flew helicopters uh, for the Marines for almost 20 years, uh, and then he flew uh, both in Iraq and Afghanistan, earned 11 air medals, uh, and now he works in our J-4, and you're going to hear more about his performance in J-4 when we read his citation. Uh, but I will tell you uh, that he is uh, uh, humble, uh, very squared away, um, and at one point in his life, uh, he wanted to play baseball uh, for the University of Arizona, but in his words, he said he was too short. Um, and and I, don't, I won't comment on that because I'm not exactly tall, right? So, uh, but, you know, his, his wife said not only wasn't he a very good baseball player, certainly wasn't very good, no, good enough to play for Arizona, uh, but uh, he's just horrible at doing things around the house. Uh, so um, she and he, unfortunately, and I sad to report this, they've been living in a hotel for a little while uh, because it's an asbestos problem in the home uh, out, in, uh, out in Fairfax. And, and uh, so what happened was, is he was doing some work around the home uh, a little bit ago, and uh, he, uh, he kicked over the, 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 you know, the sump pump thing and uh, created a leak and whatnot. Uh, instead of fixing it like he probably should have, uh, he linked up with a bunch of buddies, and they flew to Arizona to go to the College World Series. So I thought that was a very responsible thing to do. Left his, <laughs> left his wife there. Now, they've been married for 30 years. I'm not sure they'll make it to 31, uh, but... Uh, that was very, very well done. So I'm sure that got you some awards as well. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and, and give Robert the Civilian of the Year Award, uh, and it's going to be well-deserved. And our final awardee uh, is Action Officer of the Year. Uh, and, and I will tell you uh, that it's the action officers uh, on the Joint Staff who make my life uh, significantly easier. Uh, and they are the, uh, the grease that make the machine run uh, every day. Uh, they, uh, up and down the hallways, uh, they're taking their actions, they're getting them done from uh, point A to point B. Uh, and this uh, year's Action Officer of the Year goes to Navy Commander 
uh, John Pepin. Now, I know uh, Commander Pepin quite well. He briefs me very, very frequently. He's a submariner uh, by trade. Uh, and, of course, we can't talk publicly uh, much about what he does. He briefs me on what's called a, a special reconnaissance book uh, and that uh, the actions in there actually get approved by the President of the United States. Can't talk about them publicly, but what he does every single day, coordinating and synchronizing those actions, just like all the other action officers, uh, makes a huge difference to the security of the United States. Uh, he's joined here today by his spouse, Megan, uh, and I want to thank you, Megan, uh, for being here. Uh, Megan hails from the San Diego area of Long Beach, uh, and, uh, and I will tell you that, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, like, like those before him, uh, he's had a few issues as well. Um, yeah, so uh, in his case, his wife, and this is not action officer material, but his wife said that um, he is a horrible procrastinator uh, to the point where uh, she is really wondering whether they can make it from month to month in their paycheck, even though he's a commander, because he's spending an extraordinary amount of money on plane tickets because they pay top rate and he refuses to make decisions until the night before getting on a plane. So well done to you, Commander. You'll get an award as well after we're done. All three of you should be very lucky that we're giving you awards today uh, because I'm not so sure there's going to be many more in your future. Uh, but well done. And you represent all that's good about us. So, uh, you know, the, the critical functions uh, that you do, all of us do, on the Joint Staff uh, is truly remarkable. Uh, everyone knows it. Uh, that my job uh, is to advise uh, the, the President of the United States, the Secretary of Defense, and the National Security Council. And it is you, all of you, together, uh, that do the coordination, the synchronization, the planning, uh, bring it all together, and that gets fed up through me, through the JDERS, and that goes directly into the Oval Office and directly into the SecDef's office. All the time, every week, this happens, uh, and it wouldn't happen at all uh, without all of your efforts. I cannot overstate uh, the importance uh, that you collectively do for the security of the United States of America. Uh, the Vice Chairman and I and the SEAC uh, just want to publicly uh, say thank you. And everyone in this room, everyone uh, watching on TV uh, is part of that uh, effort. Um, and I will tell you that the options that we give the President, sometimes uh, they become controversial, sometimes uh, the President decides uh, to execute what we recommend. Sometimes he doesn't decide to execute what we recommend. But our job as the military is to give best military advice, and that's what we do. That's what you do. And, and I will tell you that, um, you know, in, without fail, uh, the quality of your work uh, is A+, plus every time, uh, all the time. Uh, you integrate the joint force all around the world. Uh, you develop all the courses of action for consideration. You deal in all the domains, whether it's space and cyber, or the traditional domains of land, sea, and air. Uh, and some of it is humanitarian in nature, coordinating things like COVID and responses uh, to hurricanes or, 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 or other kinds of natural disasters. Uh, but most of what you do is much, much uh, more serious and risky, uh, where we are coordinating and synchronizing things like what Pepin does with subs, uh, or uh, operations in counterterrorism, or operations in uh, uh, in, in war zones like what's going on today uh, in Ukraine. Uh, I will tell you that uh, you have a lot to be proud of over the last year. Uh, you think about what you've done, not just recently in Ukraine, which is tremendous. Uh, we have had a crisis uh, management team stood up the entire year, at least one. And at peak, we had four. Uh, think about that. Uh, crisis management teams for an entire year and you've manned all of those. You coordinated an evacuation of 124,000 human beings out of Afghanistan. And I know as well as anybody how controversial that was. But you saved the lives of 124,000 people. Uh, now, there's more than you that did it. Uh, clearly, there were troops on the ground, Marines, 82nd Airborne, Navy, Air Force, Special Forces, et cetera. Uh, but you planned and coordinated and synchronized all of that. And despite the controversy of it, each and every one of you should hold your head high as to what your contribution was. And each one of those people uh, that you saved, all 124,000 of them, that turns out to be the largest evacuation by air in human history. Uh, never been done before. Uh, Vietnam is the largest evacuation with about 130,000 people, but they went out by land, uh, or correction, by sea and air uh, in, in, 
in, in, out of coming out of Vietnam. And a lot of that was done, most of it was done actually by sea. Uh, what you did in Afghanistan, much more complicated, uh, and it was all done in a landlocked country. And you should be very, very proud of that. Uh, you think about uh, what has happened uh, just most recently, uh, beginning 24 February, uh, with the invasion of Ukraine. And those are sort of the two bookends. Uh, in the invasion of Ukraine, uh, you've got the largest single combat operation that has occurred in Europe since 1945. And arguably, we are in one of the most dangerous periods of time since at least the Cuban Missile Crisis. And it is you, the Joint Staff, uh, that is part of a broader government effort to keep us steady, stay focused, prevent great power war, and still uh, try to help out Ukraine defend its sovereignty. Uh, so whether it's uh, Afghanistan or Ukraine or anything in between, whether it's humanitarian operations or combat operations, uh, whether it's in Europe, Asia, the Middle East, Africa, Latin America or NORTHCOM, whether it's in space or cyber, whether it's land, sea or air, you, the Joint Staff, have coordinated every single one of those operations on a day-to-day -day basis without fail, and you've done it uh, for the President and the Secretary of Defense. I could not be more proud uh, of a group of people uh, than I am right now uh, of the Joint Staff. And representative of that uh, are these uh, folks that are about to get these awards. Uh, so I want to thank you all uh, for that, and I want to thank you one last time uh, for your uh, commitment to support and defend the Constitution. Uh, we, as a Joint Staff, uh, remain steady. We will always remain steady, and we will never, ever turn our back on our oath, the Constitution of the United States, no matter what the cost uh, to ourselves. Uh, and that applies also uh, to the broader military. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you will do. And we'll now go ahead and present some awards to some very, very deserving soldiers and civilians uh, for this year's annual awards. Thank you. Siak, you want to come on up here? Thank you, General Milley. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, General Milley will now recognize personnel representing each Joint Staff Directorate for all three categories. Directorate representatives receive a certificate of commendation from the Chairman, and those selected as the enlisted member, civilian, and action officer of the year will receive a Joint Staff Certificate and medal and share the stage with General Milley for their remarks. We ask that the audience remain seated for all presentations. We begin the presentations with Joint Staff Enlisted Member nominees. The Joint Staff Enlisted Service Member of the Year nominee from the Operations Directorate, Staff Sergeant Kyle Rose, United States Army. Thank you, sir. The Joint Staff Enlisted Service Member of the Year nominee from the Office of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Petty Officer First Class, Luisa Rosada de los Santos, United States Navy. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, from the Joint Force Development Directorate, the 2021 Joint Staff Enlisted Service Member of the Year, Technical Sergeant Jeremiah DeFratis, United States Air Force. Thank you. 
Sir, I'm gonna, sir, I'm gonna read the citation. Yeah. Citation to accompany the award of the Joint Service Commendation Medal to Technical Sergeant Jeremiah J. DeFratis, United States Air Force. Technical Sergeant Jeremiah J. DeFratis, United States Air Force, distinguished himself by meritorious achievements in his selection as the Joint Staff Enlisted Service Member of the Year. Calendar year 2021 from 1 January 2021 to 31 December 2021. During this period, Sergeant DeFratis was assigned to the Personnel Recovery Academy in Spokane, Washington, and the Joint Personnel Recovery Agency, and served as a non-commissioned officer in charge of Delta Flight. He supported five different specialized training courses in which he led 320 hours of instruction for 269 students delivering vital captivity skills to 26 various joint operational units. Furthermore, Sergeant DeFratis co-authored standards and agreements during two multinational working groups for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which further synchronized combined multinational operations. He was the military lead for two nine-person mobile training teams, providing specialized survival, evasion, resistance, and escape training for 150 defense intelligence agency attaches, reducing risk for national leaders in the conduct of diplomacy. In addition, he selflessly dedicated over 100 hours of his off-duty time to volunteer work and extra duties by serving local food banks, providing in-depth scooter cert certifications classes and coordinating unit booster club events, resulting in enhanced community relations. New skill sets acquired, and greater level of unit cohesion at the Personnel Recovery Academy. Finally, Sergeant DeFratis was recognized as a joint service member of the second quarter, Personnel Recovery Academy's non-commissioned officer of the fourth quarter, and the Joint Personnel Recovery Agency's non-commissioned officer of the year for his exceptional contributions in service. The distinctive accomplishments of Technical Sergeant DeFratis reflect credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the Joint Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, Technical Sergeant DeFratis. Tiak Lopez, thank you very much, appreciate you. My team, it takes a team. Uh, my team starts with uh, my mother and Chelsea. Thank you so much for your 100% of your support all the time, unconditionally. Uh, thank you to the senior enlisted at the Joint Personnel Recovery Agency. Uh, we just picked up Scott, but Becky and Paul Daggett, thanks for being an example for me to follow. And then thank you to the senior leadership at the JPRA, Colonel Hildebrand, Colonel Contreras, and all the senior leaders here. Thank you for inspiring me to give my 100%. Thank you. Thank you, Technical Sergeant DeFratis. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now continue presentations with the directorate nominees for the 2021 Joint Staff Civilian of the Year. From the Manpower and Personnel Directorate, Ms. Erin Wagnon. From the Directorate for Intelligence, Ms. Kimberly Pope. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> From the Director.
from the Operations Directorate, Mr. George Seward. From the Directorate for Strategy, Plans, and Policy, Mr. Dean Fisher. <laughs> From the Joint Force Development Directorate, Mr. Herbert Skinner III. From the Joint Force Structure and Resource Development Directorate, Mr. Jeffrey Bulware. <laughs> From the Directorate of Management, Ms. Teresa Hendricks. And from the office of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mr. Adam Inch. And unable to attend today, from the Command, Control, Communications, and Computer Cyber Directorate, Ms. Pamela Ross. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the Logistics Directorate, the 2021 Joint Staff Civilian of the Year, Mr. Robert Casillas. Citation to accompany the award of the Joint Meritorious Civilian Service Medal to Robert D. Casillas. Mr. Robert D. Casillas distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious achievement in his selection as a Joint Staff Civilian of the Year. Calendar year 2021, from 1 January 2021 to 31 December 2021. During this period, Mr. Casillas' expertise and motivation produced decision quality information and shape the Logistics Directorate policies recommendation in support of operational readiness, industrial base, and logistical challenges. Mr. Casillas led the collection and reconciliation of more than 10 years worth of data on weapons and munitions losses. In liaison with the services and office of the Secretary of Defense, he proved the media reports Congress tasked the chairman to reconcile were inflated. In addition, he scrutinized Department of Defense accountability procedures and helped prepare the chairman's response to the Appropriations Committee for closure. Mr. Casillas also set the theater's munitions laydown for the opening round of the Advanced Globally Integrated Logistics Exercise 21. On turn one of this war game, he paved the way for valuable senior logistics leadership insight and helped advance the joint's concept for contested logistics. Finally, Mr. Casillas continued to further the analytic capabilities of the Munitions Readiness Initiative. In the J4-led effort to improve logistics, visualizations, and data analysis, he inspired the program managers to validate and connect resources to speed warfighter decision making. The distinctive accomplishments of Mr. Casillas reflect great credit upon himself and the Joint Staff.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Casillas. Good afternoon, Chairman, Senior Enlisted Advisor, Generals, uh, any distinguished guests out there. I'm extremely honored and uh, privileged to receive this award today. First, to my wife, 30 years. Holy smokes. Um, I don't know what I can say that you have given me the support and love that I need. I love you. I'm extremely lucky. For two years, sir, under the leadership of Lieutenant General Barrett, more importantly, the direction, I don't know if Major General Maxwell's here, Ms. Christina O'Brien, Rear Admiral English, we have touched COVID PPE distribution, COVID vaccine distribution, Neo of Afghanistan, the AA and E, and more importantly, Ukraine. Extremely lucky, but I couldn't have done this by my, on my own. Amongst the many uh, support of the OSD, I have Mr. Dan Zaloga out here. Uh, and then when I come back and work with some of the greatest logisticians the department has to offer, Colonel Jay Johnson, Colonel Brian Hatfield, Lieutenant Colonel Billy Gorsuch, just the list can go on and on. And I don't know if Mr. Dave Lanasco is out there, but more importantly, the past two years, sir, I've been able to work with, if you, if you look up the word consummate professional, you're gonna see a picture of John Hample out there. John, it's been a, a true pleasure and honor to work with you, alongside you, learn from you. I've never seen anyone whip up a gem, a BMA, info paper, five by eight, quite like you. <laughs> Truly impressive. Uh, good luck at Tinker. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Casillas. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now continue presentations with the director nominees for the 2021 Joint Staff Action Officer of the Year. From the Directorate for Intelligence, Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Spies, United States Army. From the Command, Control, Communications, and Computer Cyber Directorate, Commander Jamie Moreno, United States Navy. From the Directorate for Force Structure, Resources, and Assessment, Lieutenant Colonel Johnny Garza, United States Marine Corps. And from the Directorate of Management, Lieutenant Commander Christopher Windham, United States Navy. and unable to attend today from the Directorate of Manpower and Personnel, Lieutenant Colonel Jesse Colland, United States Air Force. From the Logistics Directorate, Commander Anas Mazui, United States Navy. From the Strategic Plans and Policy Directorate, Commander James Thomas, United States Navy. And from the Joint Force Development Directorate, Lieutenant Commander Dennis Harbin, United States Navy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the Operations Directorate, the 2021 Joint Staff Action Officer of the Year, Commander John Pepin, United States Navy. Citation to accompany the award of the Joint Service Commendation Medal to Commander John Pepin, United States Navy. Commander John Pepin, United States Navy, distinguished himself 
by meritorious achievement, leading to selection as Joint Staff Action Officer of the Year. Calendar year 2021, from 1 January 2021 to 31 December 2021. As Sensitive Reconnaissance Operations Branch Chief, Mission Management Division, Operations Directorate, the Joint Staff, Commander Pepin was instrumental in providing the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff the requisite background information to provide the best military advice concerning sensitive reconnaissance operations to the Secretary of Defense and the President of the United States. His efforts culminated in personally briefing and obtaining legal authorities from the Secretary of Defense and President to execute our nation's most sensitive missions. Commander Pepin coordinated and briefed the most senior general and flag officers on the Joint Staff and senior leaders from the National Security Council, State Department, and Director of National Intelligence. Commander Pepin's leadership and attention to detail were instrumental in ensuring the European Command was adequately prepared with the proper authorities for the Ukrainian crisis, enabling the request of additional operating areas to give the combatant commander additional flexibility and support during the crisis. Commander Pepin's ingenuity revitalized the bi-monthly sensitive reconnaissance operations book, including adding the space domain and changing how the information was portrayed to leadership. This armed the chairman with information for better risk calculations to support advice to the Secretary of Defense and the President. Lastly, Commander Pepin is also recognized as the chairman's undersea warfare subject matter expert and directly influences senior level decision processes and discussions on utilization of global deployed subsurface and surface maritime assets. The distinctive accomplishments of Commander Pepin reflect credit upon himself, the United States Navy, and the Joint Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Pepin. Thank you, General Milley, SEAC, distinguished guests, my fellow Joint Staff teammates, good afternoon. It's truly humbling to be standing here receiving this recognition, representing the efforts and accomplishments of not just the Deputy Director for Intelligence and Surveillance Reconnaissance Operations, but the entire Operations Directorate. To my fellow war nominees, congratulations on your selection within your directorates. To Technical Sergeant DeFraudis and Mr. Casillas, congratulations on your selection as well. The Joint Staff is a remarkable organization to be a part of with our collective charge of supporting the chairman, facilitating the combatant command's request to the chairman, the secretary, and even to the president. It is a privilege to be a part of this process and part of the team that is the Joint Staff. General Milley, Lieutenant General Mingus, Lieutenant General Sims, Major General Downs, thank you for your trust not just me, but in our entire team as we get the job done. And lastly, to my wife, Megan, my son, Charlie, thank you for supporting me through this tour. I could not have done it without you. Thank you. Thank you, Commander Pepin. This concludes today's ceremony. Our receiving line for the award winners will be held outside the auditorium. Please stand for the departure of the official party. Thank you, and have a pleasant afternoon.